guys, Joe here. Hope you're doing well. Uh, knee's doing a lot better. Uh, don't look, it doesn't look like I have to go in for an operation, thankfully. I've uh, been doing a lot of physical work on it, and it's getting better. A hell of a lot better than it was before. I could go up and downstairs without whinging or anything like that. Um, now, the only time I get all stiffen up is if I've been immobile for a while. Um, but it'll loosen up real fast. Uh, doctor says it looks good. Not too concerned about it until like he wants it heal a bit more and see how time progresses and such. But anyways, um, yeah, we've all had you know kind of a knife that we've all like you know lusted after and such. Uh, you know, type of steel like you know the A2, D2, tool steel, um, O1 steel, etc. etc. Uh, the trouble is, is that they're expensive. And some of you may not be able to do any uh, forging. It is due to the fact that you live in an apartment, condo, a house with rather draconian uh, HOA regulations where you can't even fart by your their command or leave. Anyways, uh, what I'm going to show is uh, how you can easily get around that in a way and uh, make your own knife with... Uh, Good steel. So uh, let me show you uh, what I have here and uh, we'll progress from there. Okay, what I have here is uh, a bar stock of uh, 01 steel that the cat is trying to hide. <laughs> so, anyways, it's a 01 steel, uh, 12 inches long, one and a quarter thick, and an eighth inch uh, of thickness. So I'm going to show you what, I'm going to, what I did here, is I drew the outline of a knife. You know, the handle here, with the blade, about width of my palm. You can make it sort of a kind of a neck knife type of thing. But as you can see, is what I drew out here. And uh, the key point is when you order something like this, is make sure it's already annealed. Because that will save you a world of headache, especially if you... Uh, have minimal power tools. So uh, let's take it over to the uh, workbench and uh, I'll show you what I'm going to do. All right, got to clamp down here in the workbench here. Uh, pardon the, the disaster here. I'm in the process of uh, doing a blacksmithing, uh, making a bunch of these hammers here now. Anyways, um, as I said, if you want this to be already, already annealed, Otherwise, as I said, it's going to be a headache. So, this is what you could even use. You could even use a hacksaw. And use that to cut. Alright, let me show you uh, the cut here. As you can see, this is a one steel, usually real hard, but the hacksaw just went through it. Pardon, sorry about that. The hacksaw went through it. But to uh, save time here and for expediency, is you could also even use your Dremel tool. So I'm going to uh, take that cut and uh, just. Cut it out here. So what I'm going to do here is originally is as I said, it was like inch and a quarter wide this way, and I want it to be an inch, you know, width here, the handle, and then coming up to the blade and then swooping up like that. So. Okay, got my safety gear on, the uh, ear protection and eye protection. So, got the Dremel. Now let's uh, get this piece cut out. Oh, don't worry, I'm going to speed this up so the sound won't be too excruciating. <laughs>
Okay, put it into the drink to cool off. Woo, hot, hot, hot. <laughs> Hoi. Show you something here. The advantages of using a angle grinder. Went through the entire packet of cutting discs for the Dremel tool. Holy vey. Anyways, uh, again, you can cut it with a hacksaw. It's just that it's going to take time. And with the Dremel tool here, it took time as well. And that's the trouble with this. Like the 01 steel, it's, it's a very tough steel, even annealed. So, all right. Let's get to the shaping part. Now, you could use a uh, one inch by thirty sander type of thing if you have one. If not, a file will do. First thing I like to do is get the fur off. All right, hold on. There's the vehicle. So. Pardon the noise. <laughs> oh, yeah. This is why I invested myself in a sander. Especially if you uh, have a job that uses a lot of your time. along here. It's just exactly where I needed it to be. I might try to take off a little bit more here. Find all the burrs and remove them. I mean, if you don't have a vice, you could use a uh, like a two piece of two by four and uh, bolt it down or clamp down onto a table or something like that. Now the fun, tedious part is uh, going to put the edge on it. Actually, what I'm going to do first is I'm going to round these corners out. And I'm not sure if I want a nice square bottom here.
go. There we go. Not as sharp here. And now, fun part. I'm gonna go get some water and start the edge on this. Yay. Pardon for the screeching. <sighs> well, <laughs> as I was falling away on this, getting into a nice close edge here, uh, <laughs> Realized something very crucial that I should have done before I started putting the edge on it is uh, get the uh, holes in there for the uh, for the rods to peen over and such instead of uh, doing this. So what I did is I got a piece of wood here, clamped it into the vise, clamped the knife on there. So when I do spin, you know, drill it once, go. Whoosh. You know, this tip here is kind of sharp. So, yeah. As I said, uh, who wants steel? Even the needle is still real, real tough. And these are carbide drill bits, and it's still struggling. Finish up the edge. <laughs> God, I love being distracted. So, edge is coming along nicely. in <sighs> yeah let me speed this up here for you all right Now the other side. <clears throat> okay, for uh, this right here, um, as you can see the fork right here uh, that I normally use. Uh, for this you really don't need to forge uh, like this to heat a knife up, especially if, if you're in an apartment or a condo or whatever. Anyways, uh, what I'm going to do is, simple thing, is get to the hardware store and you get yourself uh, one of these uh, small propane torches. What I'm going to do is I'm going to heat it up. I'm going to start with the back area here and slowly make my way to the edge, but not exactly to the edge. I don't want to overheat it, as we all know. So... So 
going to adjust the uh, flame here. Getting the quench ready. Ooh, that got a little bit too close to the tip. On the back area, make sure it's same coloration. Ain't pretty, ain't perfect, but it works. So, now the next step is to temper it. And, uh, and after that, tomorrow, polish it up, slap a handle on it, and then finish the handle. Okay, I didn't film the uh, putting it into the oven to uh, temper, but you've already seen that with my other knife making video. But uh, it has a nice straw color right here, so <clears throat> which means it's been nicely tempered. So now, time to uh, polish this up. I'm going to use both a combination of, Dremel, of the Dremel tool and some sandpaper. So, more so just to save time. What I'm using right here is a 220 uh, sandpaper, wet dry. Uh, this is the part I don't care much for. That's why I like to use a dribble tool because running the risk of, uh, well, slicing yourself. Because even though this isn't fully sharpened, it's still sharp enough. But I'm just showing us that you can do this without using a power tool. You know, as I said, you're in an area that where it isn't conducive for you to do that.
And it's one of the reasons for I like uh, <laughs> my sander. Oh, that file was just a regular. It was just tedious. But if you have time and you don't mind it, you know, sort of get into a kind of a meditative groove doing this. Yeah, I'm going to one side. I'm just going to use just the sandpaper here. Get some water to help get some of it off. gleam polish but it'll work okay this I'm gonna use the Dremel tool <sighs> mind your ears uh, while I'm putting my earplugs in and safety glasses That didn't work. <laughs> the blast thing came off. Uh, time out here. Okay. Back after a technical difficulty, of course. So let's try this again. Yeah, using the drill tool, I just say you have to be real careful. Then you can mar the edge really. Yeah, major difference as you can tell. Here's the Dremel side and the sandpaper side. And you know, the sandpaper side has kind of a more of a patina resin type of thing. But since most people like it shiny, so just finish this up here. Use the sandpaper here to get into that crevice. But you can. Okay. It's ready for a handle now. So stay tuned. Okay. What I have here is uh, two pieces of uh, zebra wood and uh, some Gorilla Glue. What I'm going to do is uh, the instructions usually call for it to dampen the area, so. Got my little bucket of water here. Here we go. And fun part is not to get too much, but you want to get enough on there. Go. Wearing uh, gloves here is because, well, can't stand having uh, the residue <laughs> over my hands and darkening it. And take your clamp. You want to get where you want it. This 
the fun part of fibbling and fobbling. Go. And there's that. Okay, and now I'm going to sit out in the sun for a few hours to dry out, drill the holes in, and then slap the other side on, and uh, let it dry a few more hours, hopefully before the sun sets. But, uh, but before I do any of that drilling, I'm going to cut this section off right here. But not now. So, see you later. Okay. Well, for the most part, the glue has uh, set up, or at least it's secure enough that it ain't going to fall off here. So, time to drill the holes and uh, get the other half clamped on. back here. Just things here. There we go. jumped the gun here again. Well, need to uh, trim it up here. So, just hold on a second and I'll get to it. A coping saw is very useful to have here. And they're not that expensive. change your uh, direction of your cuts very easily, but the blades are very brittle though.
Now, let's get back to where we were. All right. Now where we're supposed to be. So, starting to look like a knife here in a way, isn't it? As again, I'm gonna dampen the uh, wood here. Get a little bit of the metal here. And let's put some good old Gorilla Glue on. So, and it's getting close to sunset here, so uh, let this sit overnight, and tomorrow evening when I get home from work, we'll uh, finish this up here. So, more to come later. Okay, well, what I did is I took my coping saw and I trimmed it all off as close as I can, as you can see here. Uh, you can see in a way that's kind of off-centered right here, which isn't that much of a problem. I also uh, took my drill and drilled in the two holes. You didn't, didn't bother to show that again. But what you're going to need next is, you know, depending on your what size drill that you used to drill the holes, in this case it's a 3 uh, bar stock. I can get this in a hardware store most places, mostly. Or you can order it online. Anyways, what I'm going to do is uh, put it through like so, make it flush, and then cut right there with the hacksaw. Son of a gun. <laughs> Dig it. Okay. Now at this point, what I like to do is just kind of break it off like so. And now, it's ready to be peened over. Now at this point you want to be careful that you don't want to hit around the wood otherwise you'll uh, split it. And that sucks. I like to get on the corner of this and really get it so it goes up a bit. Now for the other hole. You don't need hard hits, just tap. Because uh, the brass rod basically is a very soft metal and expands easily.
now to uh, safety the blade and uh, start sanding it. Okay, I uh, now safety the blade. I uh, put a piece of cardboard around it, duct tape, and uh, well, <laughs> as long as I don't get uh, too crazy with it, uh, it should be uh, good to go. So, right now I'm starting with uh, 80 grit sandpaper here. So. This is what's good about having kind of a workbench or something like that. You just go like this, help add a little extra pressure and stability on the other side. Coming along nicely. Now I have other grits that I'll be switching over to, so see the progress. Coming along nicely. Coming along nicely. <laughs> Here it is. Not as blocky anymore. You know, some choose that prefer the blocky handle. I don't. Uh, mostly because it's easy to get blisters. But uh, I'm liking how the coloration is coming out. Let me get some water on this. Oh, yeah. Look at that. Nice. Well, now to a finer grit. Okay, now to use 100. Yeah, I might want to put this safety thing on. That'd be entertaining for you guys to watch me replace myself. And now, the uh, final sanding of uh, 220, which I like, makes it really smooth, but not too smooth. we go. Now all we need to do is uh, oil this up and sharpen it up and she's ready to go. Minus the sheath, but you get the point. So let me uh, wipe this down and oil it.
I could get a good coating of linseed oil on my knives, handles. Oh yeah. And I have to <laughs> always stress, it's like, it's ridiculous, but be careful hold, handle, handling the blade. I mean, it's, it should be common sense, but there are people out there with just none. And well, one thing to learn common sense is to make a mistake and cut yourself. Won't do that again. <laughs> you know, as the saying goes, a wise man learns from others' mistakes. And I've made my share. <laughs> so. Let's bring this out to the sun and let it shine. All right, here it is. Oiled up and ready to be sharpened. Liking how this turned out. You know, you might actually see this being used in one of my videos. I'm telling one though. <laughs> so there you have it. I mean, is it perfect? No, it's not. I mean, could I have done a better job on some things? Yeah, absolutely. But I'm just showing that uh, if you have time and minimal tools, uh, restrictions on what you can and can't do where you live, um, this is what you do, can do to get around it. So, I hope you enjoyed it. And uh, if this helps uh, motivate you to make a knife like this or something like that, by all means, go for it. I mean... What's the worst thing that could happen? You fail? Oh well. You know, life is a lesson to failures. So, anyways, I, uh, I hope you like it. Hit like if you liked it. And if you haven't already, subscribe. So, uh, more come to later. I have some big plans to go. So, talk to you later.